So we're done talking about the pelvis. Uh, let's move on to the thigh. So the um, thigh is largely supplied from the profunda, uh, which is a, a branch off of the external iliac artery. So the external iliac artery is going to come down. It's going to go under the inguinal ligament. This is also called Popart's ligament, also called the ilioinguinal ligament. Here it is right here. When it crosses under there, it changes its name to the common femoral artery, which is this short segment, which is the segment that we puncture for arteriography, most commonly. We also use the radial artery and other branches, but uh, we certainly use this the most common um, site because we are right-handed and we prefer the right side because when we're standing at a patient's bedside, we prefer to puncture the right groin because of uh, we can send our wires down the patient's leg and we can put them on top of the patient and use our right hand for the majority of the procedure. The uh, common femoral artery is going to bifurcate into the profunda and the superficial femoral artery. Um, in this case, they're showing us the SFA, the superficial femoral artery, which is here they're calling the femoral artery. And then there's all these branches that come off this, which is the profunda. The femoral artery and vein are within a uh, invested in a tightly um, constrained amount of tissue called the femoral sheath. And the sheath is a continuation of the transversalis fascia of the abdomen. Um, it surrounds the artery and vein, but not the nerve. There's also some lymphatics in here, and it goes nerve, artery, vein from lateral to medial. So nerve artery, vein. We remember this. Sometimes we'll say, well, venous next to penis, and that's one way to just remember that the vein is always medial. Why is this important? The femoral sheath is important because if you have a puncture of the uh, common femoral artery, for example, it'll often be contained in the sheath if there's extravasation or hematoma. Um, certainly, this, the femoral sheath extends above the inguinal ligament, but it's not as strong. And if you, if you have a posterior hematoma up here, like if you puncture the external iliac artery, you can become a large retroperitoneal hematoma and you might not be able to uh, see it. So we always want to puncture below the inguinal ligament uh, and puncture the common femoral artery. Here it is again, another look at the femoral sheath. This, uh, woven mess of tissue here that contains the artery and the vein, and then there's a lymph node um, as well. Lymphatics are as well. So there's one nerve, uh, which is the genital femoral nerve, but um, the most of the nerves are outside of the femoral sheath. All right, so the medial, most medial component is gonna be the lymph node, but the second most is going to be the vein. And so we're, when we're distinguishing, distinguishing between artery and the vein, vein is always medial to the artery when you're looking at the common femoral uh, artery or vein and you're thinking about puncturing. Here they are again, uh, crossing under the inguinal ligament here. You have the artery and the vein going under the inguinal ligament where they become the common femoral artery and vein. Again, here is the common femoral artery, which is gonna bifurcate into the superficial femoral artery, which has some branches, but not, a, not as many as the profunda right here. So the profunda is really gonna supply the majority of blood, blood flow to the thigh, and it becomes an important collateral path when the superficial femoral artery is occluded in the setting, for example, of atherosclerosis. Also, the femoral neck is supplied from branches off the profunda, which is the lateral uh, and medial circumflex femorals, which are gonna supply the femoral neck here. So this is an example of the arterial phase of a contrast enhanced CT. I see that there's some contrast in the, in the bladder here, but there's also contrast in the, um, in the artery. This is arterial phase. 
And so here's a vein that doesn't have any contrast in it, but here's the artery and the lymphatics are too small. So you, sorry, the lymphatics would be here, but you can't see them, they're too small. Also, there it is right there coming out. Here's the femoral artery and femoral vein going below the inguinal ligament, which is out of plane. We, uh, when we puncture the femoral artery, as I mentioned, we like to be, uh, we don't want to be too high. So the um, ilioinguinal ligament comes from the anterior superior iliac spine and goes to the uh, pubic tubercle, tubercle, which is going to come down and it's going to go from here all the way down to here. And basically imagine that there's a line here and you don't want to cross that line. You don't want to go too high. So uh, we like to puncture below the equator of the femoral head. If you can imagine the femoral head like a globe, uh, you want to make sure that you're not above the inguinal ligament. And so we often put a Kelly clamp here just to mark a spot to enter with our needle. And then provided that the patient's not too uh, obese, then we won't have to cross as much tissue and we'll end up with a safe puncture below the equator. We often say we want to be in the South Pacific. You know, somewhere below the equator. There's the equator. There's the equator. So you're going to want to be somewhere in here um, when you when you puncture. In this case, we're talking about the uh, Atlantic, but you get the point. Here we go. So here's the common femoral artery. Here's the equator. And here is the superficial femoral artery. And here is the profunda. And so we've punctured, we've uh, obliqued the patient a little bit, so we're not directly over the, art, uh, over the femoral head, but we punctured here, we've entered somewhere over here, which is below the equator, and then just, this is satisfactory. This is the inferior epigastric artery, this is the deep circumflex iliac artery. So how do we gain access? We um, look, we wanna feel the inguinal leg, Ligament. That's what this operator is doing. So you, we usually use fluoro to make sure we're below the um, pelvis and in the region of the common femoral artery. Then we puncture it with a needle. Here, this operator is puncturing a vein, but uh, the same thing can be done in an artery. And uh, then you thread a wire and uh, secure a sheath and then you go from there. This is an example when you have extravasation uh, in the femoral artery. In this case, this is related to a groin puncture, and you can see that there's this line of contrast extravasation, which is called a pseudo vein, because it looks kind of like a vein, but it's actually just contrast stuck in the femoral sheath. So you can see that what's happening is there's extravasation here, and it's migrating all the way up through the femoral sheath and then getting into the, into the retroperitoneum. So that's bad. We have to treat that. That's major life-threatening bleeding right there. So uh, the way we gain entry into arteries and veins is the Seldinger technique. So here we are, we puncture the artery, we get blood back. Once we get blood back, we thread a wire, then uh, we make a dermatotomy or we make a dermatotomy before we puncture with the needle. And then uh, we put a dilator in and, or a catheter and we thread that over the wire, and now we've just secured access to an artery, and we can then do different things, like put a catheter in and do whatever's necessary to treat the patient. So after we get in with the wire, we uh, take the needle out. We like to secure access to the artery that we're going to um, use for the rest of the procedure with a sheath. A sheath is designed so that you can go in and out many times through the same arteriotomy, but not injure that artery when doing so. It has a three-way stopcock so that you can hook up a pressurized, uh, heparinized bag of saline and sometimes mixed with heparin and flood that in so that this doesn't thrombose the common femoral artery. Six French or five French, sometimes seven French, these are the standard sizes that are used. Okay. Uh, then once we get in and we, we like our sheath, Every time we go in, we're going to be protected because we have a sheet there so we don't injure that artery. And we're going to use vascular catheters. This is 
Some are forward-facing catheters like this. This is a Cobra. Looks um, kind of like a Cobra head and a hockey stick configuration. Um, one name for this would be a Cumpy catheter, K-U-M-P-E. And then there's also back-facing catheters here or re reverse curve catheters. And what these do are just push. Sometimes they have larger curves to push you off the back of the aorta or just get you uh, the ability to select very downgoing vessels like this. We use uh, wires that have a safety wire in them, uh, a central core wire uh, with a mandrel in it, and then this spun wire around it that uh, goes around the whole wire. So actually that's the safety wire spun around it and the center mandrel is the, the, the part that it's welded to. Um, so our wires, most wires in angiography are not um, a simple straightforward wire. It's not one filament. It's, it's at least two filaments uh, welded together. All right. So uh, going back to the thigh, we have our femoral artery, superficial femoral artery. We have this deep artery of the thigh, which is also the, known as the profunda. And remember, I showed you that, in, that obturator artery going through the obturator canal. It's right here. So if you have occlusion of the external iliac artery, then the internal iliac artery will fill the lower extremity largely through this important collateral path, this obturator. And you can see it's right next to these other arteries coming from the medial circumflex femoral. So they're just going to fill right in here. And this is going to supply, this is going to get large and it's going to be able to supply the, the leg. There will be other... Uh, arteries that come into play as well, but this one is, becomes uh, invaluable. And remember, there's the uh, lateral circumflex femoral, and uh, here's this main artery here, and this is largely the supply to the femoral neck and uh, head. So this is an example of uh, disease of the external iliac artery here. We have a problem here. It looks like a dissection or an atheroma. We've gone up and we've done something to it, and we can see that there is there are filling defects right here in both of these vessels. Um, so these are this is the uh, common femoral artery. Here's the femoral head. We've punctured the common femoral artery, and there's big atheromas here that have probably migrated down from this during the puncture that have gone here and threatened the lower extremity circulation. So what, what we'll do is try to spend a lot of time removing these uh, or um, possibly even have someone cut down and re remove them surgically. Um, other problems with the common femoral artery, this is a 94-year-old female status post MI, and she has a interesting finding here, which is that there's this large vascular structure which is very bright and it is uh, not seen on the other side. So immediately our interest is peaked because we, see, we should see symmetry, uh, especially in the lower extremities and the upper extremities too, but uh, we don't see that here. And um, so we're left wondering what this is. Now it's, uh, we're below the inguinal ligament. And um, so we're in the femoral which is where someone might puncture a, for a cardiac cath. They might puncture the femoral artery for a cardiac cath. In this case, someone punctured the left femoral artery and a cardiac cath is done in someone with an MI. So what we're seeing here is a vein that's filling early and is expanded when compared to the other side. And let's prove it. So, um, I'm sorry, actually, this is... Okay, can we stop again, Christina? No. Okay, so uh, here's another example of femoral artery problems. This is a 94-year-old female who had a myocardial infarction, and those patients will often have cardiac caths. And if you have a cardiac cath, what that means is, is someone is doing angiography of your coronary arteries, and the way they do that is typically through the, uh, either the right or the left femoral artery. So in this case, we have a very large structure um, on this contrast-enhanced CT, which is arterial phase. You know it's arterial phase because that looks like an artery. 
Um, here's the femoral vein, which is a little bit posterior to it. We're not in the, uh, we're not at the same location as we were earlier where the vein is medial to the artery. Now we're lower down and so the vein can course behind the artery. And uh, we see this asymmetry. So our eyes are struck by that. There's also some soft tissue swelling here, some, maybe some hemorrhage. And uh, so we're, we're not sure what this is. It could be a pseudoaneurysm. That's one possibility. It could be some big dilated venous structure. We're just not sure. So we do an ultrasound and we, sh we see that there's this large structure here, which has very turbulent flow in it, to and fro flow. Uh, and it is being fed by an artery. So this is a pseudoaneurysm that is fed by the femoral artery. The pseudoaneurysm is compressing it. See this sort of curve here? It's, it's causing mass effect on that artery. And these can be treated with thrombins. So here it is, this is color flow showing no flow in there. And the reason there's no flow in there is because the pseudoaneurysm, which was identified here, confirmed here and initially suspected here, was treated with thrombin. So uh, we typically use thrombin injected through a skinny needle, just a few hundred units will usually do. And uh, this will immediately thrombose any vessel you inject it into kind of like a magic trick and you watch it with ultrasound while you do it and it is very uh, fast uh, all you have to do is put you know like 0.2 cc's in, of thrombin into this uh, pseudoaneurysm and you'll thrombose it here's another problem uh, unfortunately we see sometimes here in san francisco this is a 50 year old female with IV drug use and a right groin mass. And here we have a large sort of mixed uh, density structure, which looks like it's vascular involving the right groin. Here I have low, dense, low density material um, with that's well outlined that looks like a vein. Um, so I think that's probably a DVT. And then we also see this bright structure here, which is round and looks kind of like the pseudoaneurysm we saw earlier. And this is a pseudoaneurysm with a DVT. And it is um, seen in the setting of IV drug use sometimes when patients are uh, injecting multiple times into their right groin, for example, here, they're looking for any vessel they can get a needle into. And so they'll damage arteries or veins in their path and can get infected. Infections. And so this is really a mycotic pseudoaneurysm with uh, DVT and phlebitis with all this edema around it. So um, there it is on this volume rendered CTA. You can see that there's a pseudoaneurysm. You can see that there's compression of the right common iliac. I'm sorry, right uh, femoral vein there, femoral artery, excuse me, right here. And uh, you can see that there's this large pseudoaneurysm. So this is just a mycotic pseudoaneurysm with an AV fistula because there's a connection between the pseudoaneurysm and the vein here, right here, with thrombophlebitis and DVT. Thrombophlebitis because there's, uh, there's edema and inflammation around this because of all the uh, indicated by the edema. And then of course there's a DVT. So it's rare to see them all together, but here we do. So uh, as I mentioned, there's the uh, femoral artery, which is going to the common femoral artery, which is going to give off the profunda, and it's going to give off this lateral circumflex femoral, which is important to supplying the femoral neck and the femoral head, and it'll anastomose with the medial, medial circumflex femoral, which will come from behind. So not to, not to dwell too much on this, but it is important to understand the flow to the lower extremity when you have collateral or when you have occlusion and you have collateral vessels form. Here's this inguinal ligament here. So this is the external iliac artery becoming the common femoral artery, the profunda. And this collateral network here is important when you have external iliac occlusion because flow will come down from the internal iliac 
via the medial circumflex femoral and then get down into the profunda through these branches, go back up and then go down the SFA and the profunda to supply the lower leg. This is an example, it's an 89 year old um, female uh, who had a motor vehicle accident. And you can see here that we have some bright stuff here and some calcification. And then you wouldn't know this, but there's a hematoma here and a little bit of an active extravasation of arterial phase contrast. And the patient wasn't doing so well, so we decided to uh, do an angiogram with, the, with a possible embolization. And you can see that we've gone in through the left. Remember I said earlier we like to go in through the right? Well, we couldn't go in through the right because there was an occlusion there. So here we are going up through the left. We do an angiogram. We see that there's an occlusion. This is, in this case, this is chronic atherosclerosis with calcifications right here, this little break here. And contrast is obviously getting around this because there has to be another collateral route. In this case, it's coming through that obturator collateral and filling through the profunda going up and then down, just the way I mentioned. So you can actually do an angiogram here and we were able to identify this collateral path. So that's what this is. This obturator collateral path, which is critical in uh, common femoral and external iliac vein, and, or I'm sorry, artery uh, occlusion. In this case, we're able to embolize part of the supply that supplied the bleed, but still maintain uh, collateral flow down. And you can see that it's still filling here. Okay, because there's multiple branches that take over, not just that one. So the SFA, a superficial femoral artery, has a few muscular branches and the profunda has uh, many more. The lateral circumflex uh, uh, femoral artery gives off these, this descending branch. So a lot of times people will confuse the descending branch with that of the profunda, but they're different. The profunda uh, is much larger than this descending branch and the descending branch of the lateral circumflex uh, femoral is, la is more lateral. So again, here's the SFA, superficial femoral artery. Here's the profunda, giving off its descending branch of the lateral circumflex femoral. And this is the main branch of the profunda here. There's another artery that is talked about from time to time and is rarely seen, but I figured we'd bring it up. It's the persistent sciatic artery. I don't think I should go through this lecture without at least mentioning it. And so I'm not going to spend much time, but I want you all to know that there is a rare variant that is a continuation of the internal iliac artery. And this is um, basically a persistent sciatic artery. So the sciatic artery is an artery that is important in embryogenesis and it is the supply, the blood supply to the lower extremity. Uh, until about six weeks. There, it, after six weeks, it starts to regress and the superficial femoral artery takes over and it gets larger. But in some people, the persistent sciatic, or the artery, sorry, the sciatic artery will persist and there it is called a persistent sciatic artery. Now, why is this a problem? Why should I even mention it? It's so rare. Well, the reason is, is that it, it essentially follows the same path as the sciatic uh, nerve. And the sciatic nerve, as you probably know, can be impinged quite easily. And the sciatic artery, therefore, can be impinged and can have micro trauma over time, for example, with sitting and whatnot, just like you ha can have with the sciatic uh, vein, I'm sorry, the sciatic uh, nerve. And, and uh, then you can have a pseudoaneurysm develop, like in this case right here. So here we have an artery that goes through the um, greater sciatic foramen uh, and it goes down. This is where the um, sciatic nerve would be as well. And then you have a pseudoaneurysm developed from trauma. Here it is again. Uh, and you can still have normal uh, external iliac artery and, and a normal external, uh, sorry, a nor normal femoral artery as well, but you can, in, in addition, have the sciatic, persistent sciatic artery, which is here. All right, so this is going to go down, and obviously this can get sat on, and then in this case, there's a thrombo pseudoaneurysm associated with it. 
So it's going to follow the uh, sciatic nerve and it's going to come through uh, under the piriformis um, in the greater sciatic foramen right here and come right down here and go posterior and it's going to go posterior to the ischium and it can get impinged and there can be a pseudoaneurysm developed from years of sitting on it. Here's the piriformis right here. Here's the inferior gluteal artery and the persistent sciatic artery would come along adjacent to it. Here's the sciatic nerve. All right. The superior gluteal artery comes out above the piriformis muscle at the roof of the greater sciatic foramen. What's going on here? This is a, uh, another patient with um, a superficial uh, femoral artery angiogram bilaterally, and you can see that there's a little narrowing right here where this superficial femoral artery crosses the thigh, I'm sorry, crosses the femur, and uh, that is a classic location for SFA, uh, occlusive dis disorders or, uh, or stenosis. In this case, there's a stenosis. It's not completely flow limiting. We don't see a big we don't see a delay, for example, in contrast filling between these two vessels, but we can't tell unless there's dynamic imaging available. But that is a very common spot. And th there's a lot of people that have looked into why that is. No one entirely understands. But one of the reasons is probably because of the, this thing called the adductor um, hiatus, which is where the SFA comes through a little choke point and can get pinched off right there. And there can be a lot of micro trauma to that area. And then you can get atherosclerosis and collagen deposition as a result. And then you get a narrowing there. This is also the angiographic landmark when the superficial femoral artery becomes the popliteal artery. So anything above here we'll call the SFA and down here we'll call the popliteal artery. In this case, we have uh, um, a different patient with bilateral uh, occlusions of the superficial femoral artery and we don't see any filling of the SFA in its normal location here and we see too many vessels here. So this is the profunda coming down, giving off these perforating branches which are going to fill the superficial femoral artery and we see it on both sides and we see why and that is because there's so much calcification here. So this is related to atherosclerosis. Here is where we showed that choke point, that site of a little bit of uh, micro trauma that can happen over years, and that can result in narrowing of the superficial femoral artery, and that is this adductor hiatus right here, um, which is essentially a hole in the um, adductor magnus right here, right there. So, and that is where we declare that the femoral, the, the superficial femoral artery becomes the popliteal artery. Here it is right here again. Here it is right here, adductor hiatus, okay? So that's the SFA become the popliteal artery. Uh, once it becomes the popliteal artery, um, so the, basically the SFA is going to go through this adductor hiatus to move posterior, and the popliteal artery, as you know, is posterior. You can feel it. If you feel your pulse in your knee, you, you, that's the popliteal artery that you're feeling. And that will go down in this um, popliteal fossa. And uh, we're talking about the artery now. So this is kind of this deep and protected area. Uh, certainly posterior dislocations of the knee and trauma of the knee can cause popliteal artery injury or, or DVT or nerve injury as well because it's very deep and close to the bone. Here's the popliteal artery again. Uh, there's geniculate arteries that are gonna come off and this is an important collateral path should there be occlusion of the popliteal artery. So the superior lateral and superior medial geniculates will anastomose with the inferior medial and inferior lateral geniculates. Just another uh, view of the popliteal artery and these important collaterals. These are called the sural arteries here, which come off the popliteal. They're superficial vessels, but if you have a Occlusion here of the popliteal artery. Uh, the sural arteries are very important collateral paths that can come down and eventually fill the, the, uh, 
distal vessels of the lower leg, uh, in addition to the geniculates. All right. So here's an example of a patient that has a comminuted uh, supracondylar femur fracture. And you can see that there's, here's the popliteal or the distal SFA. There's occlusion. They're still filling down here through this crazy collateral path. Uh, and these are from, uh, in this case, surls or geniculates that are coming down. In this case, this is a superior geniculate, medial geniculate coming down. Uh, but that's what they look like. So they will come in and supply the, the uh, uh, occluded segment distally. Another important uh, vessel or uh, pathologic problem is the popliteal entrapment syndrome. And that's when you have compression of the popliteal artery from uh, the medial head of the gastrocnemius muscle and you get this medial deviation with active plantar flexion. So if a patient stands up on their tiptoes, for example, they're actively uh, plantar flexing, and that can cause the medial head of the gastrocnemius to pin impinge on that uh, artery. This is due to this sort of ectopic insertion of it. There's several different types, and you can review popliteal entrapment syndrome on your own. I don't think it's important early on to understand all kinds of popliteal entrapment, but note that if you have this sort of kink of the popliteal artery that's associated with popliteal artery entrapment, a lot of people will have that kink, but they don't have entrapment. And so it goes along with symptoms like, uh, you know, claudication of your calves with exercise. Popliteal artery aneurysms can be seen. Uh, this is a, bizarre looking angiogram and the reason it's bizarre is because this very irregular appearance of the popliteal arteries and the distal SFA and the reason they're irregular is because the wall is actually expanded and there's just mural thrombus uh, creating a flow lumen for arterial flow to get down through it. So this is actually not the wall of the artery. The wall of the artery is out here. The irregularity is due to irregular mural thrombus. Anytime you see this, and this often throws people off, they don't think about this being just a simple flow limb in, in an artery. It looks like a vasculopathy or some bizarre thing, but it's just atherosclerosis with popliteal artery aneurysms. And we're just looking at the luminogram, which is the flow of the, you know, the, or the uh, appearance of the inside of the artery. That is the lumen. Uh, 